On today's episode of Hootworthy, I got to talk to Luke, a 10th grader at GCA who is a USA Gymnastics champion. We talked about how he got into gymnastics, his experience so far, and his achievements. Enjoy the show. Luke, thanks for coming on the show. 10th grader at GCA, and you're on Hootworthy because of your success in gymnastics. Now, I might be underplaying success a little bit, so buckle up, people, because I've got a mouthful for you for what Luke has achieved here. So he's the 2023 tumbling national champion at level youth elite, ages 13 to 14, you earned this at the USA Gymnastics Championships in June 2023. So that event qualified you for, and you got selected to the US Junior National Tumbling Team for 2024, so the year we're in right now. You're also ranked fourth in the world, I said the world here, in the tumbling age group two, so that's 13 to 14, and you earned that at the World Age Group Championships in November of 2023. And that was an event that you had to be invited to, selected to. So <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Okay, that's incredible. Uh, but before we get into it, what's, what's the worst injury that, that you've had in gymnastics? Well... Actually, walking, not even tumbling. Walking. I stepped off a ledge at my gym. I was at practice, rolled my ankle, and fractured my foot. Ow. Fractured your foot. Well, you know what you need to do now. You just need to start flipping everywhere, mm -hmm. and then you'll be fine, apparently. Good grief. Ugh, that ledge. We got to do something about that ledge here. We got to put a sign or something. So why gymnastics? What... What sparked your interest in the first place, and, and, and how did you get started? Well, it? it actually started because growing up I had OCD really bad. Okay. So I had to find something to get my mind off stuff, and my mom signed me up for parkour classes okay, at cool. the gym. Yeah. And then the owner of the gym had a TNT team, tumbling team, and he invited me to the team later on after that. Oh, cool. So he's like, sees you flipping around, doing all this free running stuff. I'm around. He's like, oh man, I bet that guy can do the tumbling team. And that's what got you in. You were like, I'm, yeah, I'm for it. Mm -hmm. you, you wanted, and so the, the rest is history here that you started. So, what events do you compete in, Luke? And because uh, I, I know gymnastics has a good amount of events, right? So, can you tell us what events you actually compete in? And then, can you also describe them? for us, like um, how the scoring works, that, that sort of stuff? Well, I compete in three different events. The first one's tumbling, which is a long floor made out of fiberglass rods. So you go tumble down it, and there's eight skills to a mat at the end. And then the second one's double mini, which is a small trampoline, and it's angled on the front. You do one skill on and one skill off and then a trampoline, and we have 10 skills on the trampoline. And the way that the scoring works is you have an execution score for how clean you are, how clean your skills look, like pointed toes, that kind of stuff. Oh, like when you're flipping around and or whatever. And then hitting okay. positions. There's three positions, tuck, pikes, and straight. Okay. And you have a difficulty, which is how hard your skills are. Oh, I see. And then you have stuff like... Landing deductions, like if you stuck the skill or if you took a step and stuff like that. Oh, I see. So those are all different categories of the scoring. So mm -hmm. you could nail like one or two, but then do terrible in the landing or something, and that really hurt your score mm -hmm. kind of thing. So you need to do well. When you say like stick the landing, could somebody not move their feet but look ridiculous in their upper body and still get a perfect well. since they don't move their feet? Or... 
Is it a little more like nuanced? Than I, it's that? a little bit more complicated. It's okay. just, it's like, it, it's really dependent on the judges too. Like if they want to count it as a stick, they can. But if you're also trying really hard to keep it there, uh -huh. then they may give you a deduction for it. I see. When you say the uh, tumbling and you say eight skills and there's this fiberglass, can you pay, can you like, uh, paint a picture for us are you like running down mm -hmm. uh this and then you're just doing when you say eight skills that means like you're doing you have to do at least eight no more no less like flips or jumps that that's how that works mm -hmm. there's a wooden thing you run down it's like a wooden runway okay and then you hurdle onto the floor so jump onto the floor and then you tumble down the this floor made out of fiberglass rods so does it have a little spring to it? Mm -hmm. A little bounce to it? Okay. Is it more than a trampoline or it's less? Not more than, than a trampoline. Uh, uh, okay. And for your trampoline event, is that just like one rectangle trampoline and you're just mm -hmm. bouncing up and down on it? Oh, man. So what's your, um, I'm assuming uh, that you're on the tumbling team. That's your best event. Mm -hmm. that's, your, that's your bread and butter. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think that? You're, you're best at tumbling well, as opposed to the trampoline and the double mini. I guess I've always just had better time, a better time applying force into the ground than I have controlling myself. Oh, I see. It still takes control, but I mean, for floor, you have to put a lot of pressure in the floor and you have to be really fast and you have to be really strong. And I think that's the part of it that I like. Yeah, well, you're awesome at it. I've only seen like a few clips of you doing that tumbling thing, but it's like you are a superhero pretty much, like Jedi Knight over here. But um, how do you become a Jedi Knight? Walk us through your training routine. Like how, how did you get to, to where you are? And how do you prepare yourself for these competitions? Well... I usually practice about three hours a day. I get there about four o'clock and then... Four in the morning? No, four oh, okay. p.m. <laughs> it's like, wow. And then I practice till 7 p.m. And then we have something called a speed program that we run. It works on the fascia system and how quick you can twitch your muscles and basically how fast you can run, how high you can jump, those kind of things. Sure. Injury prevention. And... Then I usually go home. I only do speed two nights a week. I usually stay late every other night, though, towards like 8 o'clock, still tumbling. And to prepare for competitions, I usually put together parts of my routines, of my passes, before competition. And you come up with those? No, coach. Coach is like, Luke, these are the flips you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, coach. It's... He's like, I need you to jump. And you're like, how high? You know, you're like ready to, you're ready to go. Um, have you ever been given a routine that they're like, we want you to do this and you don't feel great about all the skills that you have to do? Or have you gone into a competition where you're like, man, I'm, I'm nailing these? Uh, most of the time I'm going in thinking I'm going to nail them. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't always go that way. Sure, sure. Um, because... My coach coaches me really well, so most sure. of the time anything he throws at me, I'm pretty confident with because he's worked me to be confident with it. That's awesome. Um, how do you balance, Luke? So you said that you're doing this training three hours a day, and are we talking Monday through Friday? Are we talking Monday through Sunday? Do you get it? Do you take a day off? Monday through Thursday, take Friday off, then I have another practice Saturday, and then I take Sunday off. Jeez, okay, so you're obviously doing this a lot. How do you balance uh, your studies at GCA and essentially being a junior national champion? Well, I usually wake up at eight for homeroom and then I on my lunch break I do a lot of work I try to get work done and then okay. after my last class at I think it ends at like 3 30 mm. I'll go straight to practice from there mm. and then I'll get back home and do more school work wow and do your uh teachers know you're doing this do they kind of give you some flexibility sometimes with mm -hmm. stuff they do they work around work around you sometimes mm -hmm. they're like yeah man you're a junior 
champion. I, you do what you need to do. Um, tell us about a memorable or funny moment from one of these events. Wow. Well, I mean, there's plenty, plenty of memorable moments. Every competition I go to is pretty memorable, like making the national team and that stuff. For sure. But also, I mean, I don't know if I've ever done a pass. Like, I'll do passes at competitions. I'll stick them, awesome pass, and then I'll get straight up and I'll trip. What's a pass? Uh, my routine. Like Okay. Yeah. So you'll do a routine, you'll stick it, and then you said you'll... I'll trip most of the time. Does that count? It, yeah, against your like after I'm done, I'll just be walking and I'll trip. Okay, so or, they don't. That doesn't count then. Yeah, it does count. It does. Oh, it count. Like I'll, I'll like you there's, just, there's a salute at the beginning, and then there's a salute at the end, and then usually after I'm done saluting at the end, I'll trip, <sighs> and then a lot of I like one time I got first place at a competition, did really great, and then I got up on the podium and almost fell off because I tripped getting up. <laughs> Luke, I'm seeing a pattern here ledges yeah <laughs> and walking not good for not you. good for me we need you to just start flipping everywhere you just need to do skills just all the time you should just backflip back handspring because you got to watch out for those ledges um so you are you're a national champion you're a member of the junior national tumbling team what are your goals for the future with gymnastics is this something you want to do as a career is this something you've just found out man i'm i'm really good at this uh a hobby I, I want to do this or are you like career oriented what what, do, what are your goals where do you what, what do you see for yourself there? well for the future i'd really like to make an olympics in the future for trampoline Cool. For trampoline, you said? Mm -hmm. That's the only one there is for Olympics so far. Maybe in the future there will be more. But Okay. And uh, World Games. World Games? What are, what are the World Games? Are the, those are different than the Olympics? Uh, it, it, it's basically Olympics for non-Olympic events. Oh, I see. And so could you do tumbling at the World mm -hmm. Games? I see. So you're trying to get better at trampoline? Um, because you're not on the national team for trampoline no, right no, now. Not correct? right now. Right. So you want to get there, get on the Olympics, and then also do world games for tumbling because you're, you're killing it at, at tumbling. So what advice would you give to younger gymnasts? If there are some gymnasts right now that are aspiring gymnasts watching this, what advice would you give them, Luke? Well, the hardest part of gymnastics, it's a, of course it's hard physically, but mentally, it's really, really hard, and a lot of people like to be really hard on themselves for it because you're going to fall a lot, and you're going to fall at competitions, and you're going to be really hard on yourself. You shouldn't be. I mean, every single time you fall, it's a learning experience. And in order to fall, I mean, like, like to get better, you have to fall, and you got to learn from those falls. There's no other way. There's no shortcuts to it, so you should be okay with falling right. can't be upset all the time and i mean that's something especially throughout my career i've struggled with is not being so hard on myself i felt like i always needed to be perfect but perfection doesn't exist so i can't be right yeah there hasn't been a perfect 10 maybe there has been a perfect 10 score i don't know not I'll a do. lot <laughs> but uh what you just said reminded me of a batman quote and it says why, why do we fall alfred Asked, you know, Batman, like, why do we fall? And he's to learn to pick ourselves back up. So that's a, that's a great mm -hmm. mindset that you're talking about. We're going to fall, we're going to fail, but we got to learn how to pick ourselves back up. Uh, what, what do you enjoy about being a student at GCA, Luke? I really enjoy how flexible it is. It's helped me a lot, especially with training and with competitions because. I don't have a lot of time during competitions, and usually the time I have is spent mentally preparing and resting my body. But with GCA, I can kind of get my work done and watch my classes on my own time, which makes it really easy for me to keep doing school and keep tumbling at the same time. Right, that's awesome. Well, we're glad that we found a good fit for you, Luke, here. But 
before you get out of here, any shout outs you want to give? Who do you want to <laughs> shout out? I'm sure there's a list. I'm sure there are just a there's million. There's a lot of people. I'm sure there's a there's million a people you could shout out. There's a but lot. But just broadly speaking, because we don't want people watching this to be like, Luke didn't shout me out. I don't have anybody specific, though. Yeah. <laughs> no. Maybe maybe parents, you know. Yeah. Them out, your coach, you know. Coach. Those people. Austin. For sure. Austin Culp. Yeah. For yourself, any teammates? Along the teammates, way, teammates. I got, you know. I got some friends. Uh, yeah. Emmanuel, yeah. Eman. Yeah, right on, right on. Well, Luke, thanks again for coming on the show, representing GCA so well. You're killing it, and we are going to be tuning in, watching your Olympic career. Okay, get on there, uh, gymnastics. Thanks for coming on, Luke. Thank you for having me. Thank you.